Hi everyone, so welcome back. Or if you're new, then hello. We are going to finally cover the last subtopic inside this chapter. So by definition, medicine is chemicals. They are chemicals that are used to treat or prevent diseases. And normally, medicines are safe if taken properly. But if the minute you misuse or overconsume, then it will become harmful towards our health. So medicines. We have two kinds of medicines that we're learning in our syllabus, traditional as well as modern. Okay, so when we talk about traditional medicine, think of it like it is sourced from natural sources. So it's from natural sources, like plants and animals. So it does not undergo any chemical process to produce it. Advantages are it has little side effects, however, it takes a longer time to heal, which is ginger, aloe vera, as well as garlic. So for ginger, right, which part of it is used as medicine? It is the rhizome. And how do you consume it? Boil the ginger in water and then you consume the boiled ginger water. What does it help with? It helps with bloating, indigestion or vomiting, and it also prevents cold and flu because ginger also helps to keep the body warm. Moving forward, we have aloe vera and it's the leaf part that which helps us. So how to use it or consume it? You basically extract the gel from the leaves and apply the gel on the skin or onto the wound that is on your skin. So what does it treat? It treats um, skin problems like itchy skin or other skin diseases. And what does it help? It speeds up wound healing caused by burns or cuts. So the last one would be the garlic. And which part of the garlic that is used? It is the cloves or however you pronounce it. So how do you consume it? It's you're gonna just chop it or mash it or cut it or you, you can say mince it I think if I'm not mistaken. But you're gonna cut it into smaller pieces and then just consume it raw. And so how my teacher personally likes to um the way he does it is he would mash it into smaller pieces and then mix it with honey and just consume it raw. So what does this treat? It treats colds and flu and it's also antibacterial and antifungal. It also helps to lower your blood pressure. We have so many different kinds of modern medicine. So we have five in this case that we're learning. So number one is analgesics, number two is antimicrobials, and number three is anti-allergies. Whereas if you move to number four and number five, Number four is psychotic drugs. Number five is corticosteroids. So now let's start with NLG6. Now the whole purpose of NLG6 is to relieve the pain and fever. So for example, we have aspirin, we have paracetamol, we have codeine, but codeine is more towards, it is painkiller, but it also suppress cough. So aspirin and paracetamol, although they are painkiller, note that Aspirin is very acidic, so it's not suitable for people who have gastric or even patients that are below 2 years old. It causes stomach ulcers as well as internal bleeding and it has to be taken after food, after eating basically. So paracetamol, excessive usage of it will cause liver damage. Paracetamol, for example, what we can see in real life is Panadol. That one, that one's really famous in our country. So codeine. The side effects is it causes addiction. Moving forward, so we have antimicrobials, and what it does, it inhibits or kills the microbial cells that causes diseases. But it's easier if you just say kill the microbial cells that causes diseases. All right, so antimicrobials can be split into five categories. First, we have antibiotics, antifungal, antivirus, antiseptics, as well as disinfectants. We can be taken internally whereas four and five are only for external use. All right, so let's see four and five first. So first is antiseptics. Purpose of antiseptics, um, since it's under the category of antimicrobials, it basically kills microorganisms. But differences is it's on a living surface. But antiseptics can be used on skin. For example, hand sanitizers. Hand sanitizers contain high, large amounts of alcohol. In disinfectants, however, they are used to kill microorganisms that causes diseases on non-living surface. So number one, we have antibiotics. It kills bacteria. Now, how it differs between antiviral and antifungal is antifungal, it kills fungus, whereas antivirus kills virus. All right, so antibiotics. I want you guys to focus on two things, penicillin and streptomycin. So here's a quick tip or a quick reminder. So tuberculosis, or however you pronounce it, and pneumonia are all caused by bacteria. So they're actually a bacterial infection, which requires them to take antibiotics. Now take note that when you consume anti antibiotics, you must finish all antibiotics so that the bacteria is 
fully killed. Otherwise, the bacteria will be immune or resistant towards the antibiotics if you do not consume the whole entire thing. So side effects, it causes an allergic reaction. Then moving on, we have anti-allergies. It's used to reduce symptoms of allergies and the symptoms of allergies, some, some could be a runny nose, itchiness, skin rashes, watery eyes, cough and also sneezing. So what we should take is a thing called antihistamines, antihistamines, not sure how you pronounce it. So what are the side effects? It causes drowsiness, dry mouth, as well as anxiety. So moving on, we have psychotic drugs. And what it's the function of it, it's used to treat the symptoms of mental illness. So an example is chlorpromazine. Next one is haloperidol. So side effects of psychotic drug is addiction. It causes dry mouth or abnormal involuntary movement. Alright, so corticosteroids, what it's used, what's the function? It's to reduce inflammation and swelling. So example is beta medhasone. <laughs> that's how I memorize it, beta medhasone. So that's why it's like, she's inflamed because she medhasone. This beta girl, medhasone. And yeah, that's how I memorize it. Which of the following medicines can be used to treat arthritis? The answer is, there's beta medhasone. Why? Because arthritis is basically the swelling of joints. So anything swelling or inflammation is corticosteroids. Alright, but what are the side effects? So side effects of taking this is basically you'll get high blood pressure, increase of blood sugar, as well as insomnia. So if you guys have made it this far into the video, don't forget to check out the link in our description box or the comments down below to do a quiz, a self-test quiz that you guys can do based on this video itself so that way you guys can test your understanding of how much you understand what we've learned in this video so effectiveness use misuse and abuse of medicines now modern medicines can treat a patient within a short time frame but then modern medicines also have side effects that might lead to health issue especially if we consume too much or if we consume it in the wrong way so how do we prevent this from happening please do not self-medicate Alright, so follow the prescribed dosage that, that's given from the doctor itself. And if the allergic reactions occur, please stop taking the medications and inform the doctor right away. So that perhaps the doctor can provide you with an alternative. So traditional medicines have lesser side effects, but then it does not work in a shorter time frame. And not much studies have been done on the traditional medicines, on the effectiveness of it. Alright, so consumer should get their medicines from reliable sources. Alright, so that is it with it for this video. I hope you guys understand. Like and subscribe if you do and share it with your friends. Bye!